So hopefully, hopefully you weren't like me and forgot that machines need power, specifically these electric blast furnaces. And I'm pretty sure I even mentioned last episode that these use quite a bit. And yet here I went and made a second one and a third one because we're going to need them today. And well, that necessitated making more power, which is what this yellow blocking machine here is. It's the large steam boiler from back in the first chapter. Finally got around to making it. And hey, what are you looking at? Stop that. Stop looking over there. I know it's not done. I know. I know. I know it's not done. Trust me, I have a plan and it evolves today. Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of Static Industry. And today, Ambrosius here thinks we did not work hard enough in the last episode and that we need to continue on to all the more important things that are sitting here in our quest book past aluminum because we need to get to the advanced machine hall and beyond today because I want to get to both the electric quarry and the laser engraver to get to AE2. Now, I want to be clear, AE2 isn't going to be some sort of magic bullet in this pack, because unfortunately getting to AE2 at this point only really gets us to the storage bus, the export bus, and the import bus. We also have things like the annihilation planes and a few other goodies here, but what it doesn't get us to are the pattern fighters or digital storage. So we can't really do any full on normal auto crafting. We can do some passive stuff, but given that I am materials limited, this doesn't really get us away from Tom Simple Storage quite yet although we're getting close the more important part however is that the gold drill here for the electric quarry can get a soul sand which lets me make these stairs right behind me and i can finally go around to cleaning up the huge mess over there but not down there we need to do the storage yet but that's okay because the storage system is also dependent on getting us up through the next area and into basic aluminum handling so i guess this brings us to the prep work i had to do in between the episodes because as you noticed i did build a couple more electric blast furnaces the first two over there are strictly doing aluminum just because the aluminum was slow. I went and mined a bunch more bauxite and now we've got like a stack and a half of it. So we should be okay, hopefully. But as I'm sure I mentioned, these take 32 EU each to run while they're running, which is uh, pretty much the same as what these LV steam turbines kick out. So what I did was I made a bank of six of them. I can actually go up to eight to get full transmission off these wires, but for now I'm calling this good. And they're all feeding off the large steam boiler from the first chapter which as it says it uses more fuel to burn faster to generate a lot more steam but it does burn off unused heat so it just constantly chews through fuel but I have thousands of lignite dust so I'm probably okay we'll have to see how it works over time but what I did have to do to progress us to where we need to be for this week is to build this other blast furnace which we're using to make silicon which can only really be made in the electric blast furnace either using quartz dust and coke dust or quartz dust and carbon dust. Carbon dust basically needs a centrifuge, so we can't really make that yet, but we got plenty of quartz while getting antimony, so that wasn't really an issue. I should note, however, that I'm not automating the quartz because I don't have it coming in anywhere right now, so I'm manually processing over here using a mixture of the gunpowder to overclock this to make it go slightly faster, but it's still really slow, and time in a bottle to make it go basically instantly. So all in all, it hasn't really been all that tedious to make, and I do have a couple hundred of the ore still left over until I can get it automatically. The other thing I did was I automated Electrum as well, which is just another alloy like Invar and Cooper Nickel, but we're gonna need that in the near future, so I figured I might as well just get it out of the way. So that brings us to making the silicon battery. And this jerk required I go mine some more antimony because it's just about out and I'm not going to automate this for now because it is expensive and we don't need that many yet so I guess let's just auto complete it right now and be done with it and that brings us to the advanced machine casing which is also pretty easy but I need to go automate the aluminum plates but I need to keep the numbers of these way down because I only have 96 right now but we're going to need it in the future so I need to get this out of the way I am going to be so happy when I can stop using Tom simple storage for this stuff all right and that one is now done which brings us to all of the electronic components we need to be able to make the electronic circuit. And while we've already got the diode completed, we're going to need to automate all three of these. Thankfully, the electronic circuit only requires a handful of each, so we can probably have it make four of each of these and call it good. But these basically require batteries and plates. The diode is where Electrum comes in, as well as silicon plates. We can't do the cheaper version because that requires the end doped silicon plate, which we can't do yet. And then the transistor is the same thing. It requires Electrum and a bunch of the silicon plates also. So let me go automate all of those bits. All right, now I have assemblers for all of those finished, which means we can now do the electronic circuit, which is just another assembler. All right, and that completes that. 
Which brings us finally to the Advanced Machine Hall and the MV era. And this is just everything we just made, although I need to make another battery. And while I can automate this, I am absolutely not going to yet because of antimony and aluminum. It's like I even have a backup and I don't actually have any battery alley plates made right now, which is a little bit worrying, but whatever, that gets the battery I need, which gets us the Advanced Machine Hall. And now is when things start to get complicated because we need to upgrade to the MV era in theory to power these machines properly. But we are actually going to jump straight to the electric quarry and pray we can power it. Because realistically, this thing isn't all that expensive to make. It's basically the same things as the normal steam quarry, except we need a bunch of subcomponents to make. And the biggest thing is this large motor, but it's part of this large components quest right here, which we're not gonna worry about completing right now because of our scarcity of aluminum. Yeah, right there, we're already down to less than half of what we started with this episode, and that's just on those subcomponents. So I think it's best if we just hurry along, right? Except we have a bit of a conundrum because I do need to make these large motors to be able to make the quarry. And the large motor requires these aluminum rods. Except I am really out of room on my cutting machines right now to be able to make the rods. So that is going to be a bit of a problem. So I'm just gonna make the rods manually for now since we only need to make four recipes worth. And I'm gonna worry about the cutting machines later because the lubricant is actually gonna be a real pain to pipe somewhere else. I do wanna replace these with electric cutting machines at some point though. But there we go, the first motor is made and now we are going to be waiting on parts for the others probably. Oh man, this is starting to make me nervous. That's ticking down real fast. Well, the steam quarry required to make the electric quarry took a strangely long time to make because of these steel large plates because my steel plate inventory got completely eaten up and took a while to backfill because it was also doing copper because it was making copper wires. But now we're good to go and we have all of the pieces we need to make this. Now, that said, I was kind of torn on where to put this because obviously if I want to keep it in parity with the first floor, I would want to put them over here with my blast furnaces. But I think that kind of doesn't actually work out so well base design wise. And I probably want to either upgrade or move the ones that are downstairs anyhow. I could push out the walls back pretty far and hey, wait a second. I'd only been waiting on the circuit for the destruction gadget. There we go. Ooh, I do not have the power for this. However, it takes holds a million and that ate up the whole thing. Like it was nothing. Anyways, we're not actually gonna use that right now because I actually filled in all the walls over here, although not the rest of it, because I think I'm gonna go put them on the other side of my base with the other resource generators because that kind of makes more sense to me. And I might move the other quarries over here when I upgrade them anyways. So I think we're just gonna shove it on the wall right here and make a bank of them. I'm only gonna do the one for now because I am desperately out of resources. And we really need to get to making these steel drills so that we can hurry up and make all of the bauxite, nickel, and antimony that we need to move forward. So I guess let's get this done and let's see if I remember how this is even laid out because I'm actually not entirely certain if I do. You know what, I'm not gonna pretend that I do because we're just gonna look this up because I'm very unsure right now. All right, and the shape is valid, so I actually got this more or less correct. We just need to pretty it up now and provide it with that all the cabling power that it needs. All right, so one of the things we need to do now is make steel drills drills however and I'm not going to automate this for now I'll do that in between episodes once I've got this more battened down with what I actually want to do here but we'll just make a handful by hand just to get this rolling and these are getting a bit more pricey since these do require motors and analog circuits although at least I have the materials for all of this locked down now I also needed to move this over one block because I didn't leave room for a door because that was just not smart but I currently only have power plugged into this right now we'll go put in the drills to get this started so that I start getting outputs into these output hatches that I can then pipe over into this drawer access point over here. I do have an additional problem in that if I wanted to use this like the other steam quarries I have, I wanted to lay out the drawers with all of the ores right in front of it, which A, I don't actually need to do, especially if I'm gonna create an inventory system long term, and B, these aren't actually attached to anything right now, so I can't actually do anything. I think I'm just gonna run it as decorative trim all the way along back here, along those dark oak beams as an additional decoration and allow access to it. But long term, I just don't think I need it. So I need to find somewhere to put the drawers 
yours temporarily for now. It's just going to be ugly. All right, I swear this is only temporary. We're just leaving them by the old ones for now. And while I wait for the missing ores to roll in, we probably should go try to get the last step that I wanted to get done today, which was get to the laser engraver. And this requires making the large pump. And the large pump's a little bit harder than the large motor. So we need to also make these aluminum rotors, which again, isn't hard, but I'm going to have to manually make these pieces because I do not want to set up automation for what little aluminum I have left. And I have to hope I've got enough to get this done. Nope, I didn't have enough aluminum at all. So here's to hoping we don't completely tap this out. And time soon, unfortunately, we have to carve out a lot to get this because the pocket's not humongous. And there, after waiting for too much aluminum and steel, we now have the large pump, which is ironic because the laser engraver does not need the large pump. And we just mash the button and finish since I already made the motors, which brings us to the start of AE2. And we are not ready to move into that today, although I am kind of excited, but we are kind of limited because as I said, this doesn't get us to full automation yet. But what this does mean is I now have a whole lot of homework and automation to finish up now, as well as cleaning up the look and feel of my base. Because we need to go fix the new electric quarry. We need to add at least one more over there. We probably need to upgrade the two over here and move them. We need to finally go build the inventory system down in that pit that doesn't go anywhere. And maybe I should probably do that next episode because that's kind of important. But this means that this is probably a good stopping point because now we have gotten a whole lot of progress in and we're now we're actually at the MVH, which is weirdly not actually in the next chapter because there's a whole lot left to do. To actually complete out the stage, we need to go build stainless steel to get over the turbo machine hall, and stainless steel is what's blocking us from making the pattern processor for a 2 to begin with. So that's probably the direction we want to head into, except there's a whole, whole lot of fluids we can go make off of oil, and that might be worth pursuing too before we get too far in, as well as all of Tech Reborn's basic stuff over here. So so much work left to do. Oh, hey, you know what? I almost forgot to get all of my goodies from all these quests we finished, and this one might be significant. And, oh, a free diesel generator. We start burning all our excess creosote. That might actually be a fairly good plan. And a mending book for free. I was actually needing one of those, you know, for this, so that I don't have to repair this anymore. Please don't be over the enchant level. Oh, thank you. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.